So we'll get started today. I'll give you a few options. So if you know right away one of these options doesn't work for you, just wait until I roll through something that does work for you. Virasana is what we're aiming for. So you'll start hands and knees. The knees come all the way together and the feet separate. And you want the feet to be wide enough so that you're, if you were to sit all the way back between the feet, the hips would fit between the feet. But before you sit back, it's important to take the calf muscle and move it out. So wait, so it's not, um, the knee has more space. And then you start to bring the hips back between the heels. If your hips come all the way down to the mat and you're sitting like this, that's where you stay. My hips are not touching the mat, so I need something to bridge that gap. So I'll show you from behind. Knees together, feet wide enough, move the calves away from one another, start to sit the hips between the heels. Hips are lifted. You can put a block, a pillow, a blanket, and you want to hug those feet in so that they're framing the hips not so wide that they're nowhere near the hips. Actually, I'm going to use a blanket because I feel like the block is too high. I'm going to turn my blanket that's folded this way. You can definitely use a towel, anything you have at home. So get creative. Once you find it, if you have support underneath the hips, make sure you feel even there. Tops of the feet are on the mat and you're hugging those outer ankles in. So tops of the feet press down to the mat, you're hugging the outer ankles in. And then the rotation of the thighs, it's like you can even use your hands. The inner thigh is going down toward the mat. So you can take your hands and just rotate the thigh. It might not feel like you did anything, but at least it'll help you think about rolling the inner thighs down toward the mat, pressing down through the feet, hugging those outer ankles in. And then you lift the lower belly, you lift the chest, and you're trying not to arch the chest too much. You're just trying to go for that nice long spine. Hands can rest on the um, thighs, draw the shoulders down the back, look straight forward, point the nose down a little bit, close the eyes, take a deep breath in through the nose, back out through the nose. Big breath in. Back out. Keep going with this breath. Make sure you can hear the sound of your own breath. And you can feel the breath going up and down the back of the throat. So for some of us, this is a, maybe a challenging position to be in. And I forgot to tell you that whatever's underneath the hips, if it needs to go higher, you can always go higher. But you just focus on the breath. It's a great opening for the knees. And an internal hip rotation. If you feel like the breath is relaxed to the point where you've lost the posture, start to come back into it. So press down into the feet. You're even pressing down into the hips and whatever support, whether that's the mat or the prop underneath you. Opening up across the chest. And then blink open the eyes. Reach the arms forward, palms facing up. Bring that right arm all the way up. Bend at the elbow and then just grab for the elbow. You can pull it up. Getting into that shoulder blade, getting a nice stretch on the whole right side of the body. So you should feel a little bit more length. Maybe sitting up a little bit taller, but careful not to puff out those lowest front ribs. And reach the arms all the way back up, straight up over the head. You'll bend the left elbow this time. Grab it with the right hand. Bringing the shoulder right into place. And then reach both arms back up. Get as long as you can. So you're reaching up to the fingertips. Hips are pressing down. Belly's hugging in. 
Maybe you reach up a little bit more, ground down a little bit more, and then bring the hands down in front of you. You're shifting forward to tabletop. So come to all fours. If you use something underneath the hips, remove it, set it out of the way. And once you get to tabletop, step the right foot back behind you, toes down on the mat, and then you can just take circles like you're trying to draw a circle with the heel of the foot on the ceiling or sky above you. So you're just going in one direction. Legs were bent for quite a while, so this is a nice way to kind of get the circulation back and get a nice stretch. And then you'll switch sides, right knee comes in, left foot steps back, press those toes down, and even think about spreading the toes on the foot so you get a nice wide base with the ball of the foot. Then you can start to take those circles, going one direction several times, switching when you feel ready. And then come back, bring that left knee back in underneath you. Turn the hands around. So either fingertips out to the sides or fingertips pointing toward the knees. And we'll do cat cow. And if both of those aren't good, then you can always keep the fingertips pointing forward. So exhaling to round, inhaling to reach the heart forward. And if you want more movement, more than the traditional forward and back, you can always take circles. You kind of wave the spine however you want. What's nice about this is that you're, you're at home and you can experiment a little bit. Just make sure you go the other way. So if you did take circles or waves of the spine, you're going in one direction and you're switching over to the other. Making your way back to neutral. Turn the hands back around so the fingertips point forward. Walk the hands forward and then shift forward so that the knee or the shoulders are stacked over the wrist. Lift the lower belly, reach the heart forward through the gateway of the arms, and you'll feel a nice long spine. Knees are still down on the mat. Bend the elbows halfway, point them straight back. So you should feel the inner arms uh, touching the sides of the torso. Then come back up to the top. Exhale, lower down halfway. Keep that belly engaged. Come back up to the top. This time, lower down halfway, all the way down to the mat. So you're lying on your stomach, tops of the feet to the mat, hands back by the lower ribs. Come up for a baby cobra. And then exhale, release. Two more of those. Inhale up. Exhale, let it go. Last one. Inhale up. Exhale, let it go. Come back up to hands and knees. Take a quick child's pose. Big toes together, sit the hips back, bring the forehead down to the mat, and keep it an active child's pose. So you're walking those fingertips as far forward as you can as you press the hips back toward the heels as much as you can. Ideally, forearms are lifted away from the mat because you're pressing down into the hand with the fingers spread and the arms are so far forward. That also helps you have the elbows in, keeping the arms pretty straight. Then look forward at the hands, shift forward onto hands and knees, tuck the toes, lift the hips, downward facing dog, Adam Mukashvanasana. Make sure when you look at the feet, you can't see the heels. You want to hide them behind the balls of the feet. And then you can lift and spread the toes and set them back down onto the mat, coming into that wide base with the ball of the foot. Heels are descended down to the mat, but they don't have to touch. You just want them reaching for the mat, not just lifting up toward the hips. And that's what will help you open up the legs. You can keep a bend in the legs, especially right now as we're just starting out. But if you think about your virasana, how we started, maybe stretching the legs feels a little bit better at this point. Hips are lifting up and back. So if you think about the sit bones lifting up, you'll feel a little bit more length in the hamstrings. You can hug the belly in and push the hips back a little bit more so you feel a little bit more length in the spine. And press down into the index finger, 
thumb side of the hand so you feel that length go all the way up the insides of the arms up to the underarms down the sides of the torso up toward the hips same breath we started with ujjayi The next inhale, lift the right leg up and back. So three-legged down dog. Keep those right toes pointing down toward the mat. Press out through the right heel. Knee to nose. Come forward so you stack the shoulders over the wrist. Hug the knee in toward the nose. Lift the foot up a little bit higher. Hug the belly in. Step that right foot forward up between the hands. So you can come up onto the fingertips. You can use blocks. And let's keep this first lunge pretty dynamic. So similar to what we did on the ball of the back foot before, you can start you can start to move forward and back a little bit. And maybe that'll help you get more length in the spine too. So as you reach the heart forward, you can look forward. Then once you find your spot, find a hold. So stop the movement. You can go as slow as you want and just get into that pose with the breath moving. Then straighten the front leg, coming into a modified pyramid pose. So you can let the head and the neck go as you fold over the front leg. Hands can walk back underneath the shoulders, especially if the legs are tight. If you want more, walk the hands forward. That makes it more intense. Inhale forward to a lunge. Left hand down underneath the left shoulder. Right arm reaches up for a twist. Make sure that right knee is pointing straight forward. If it's starting to lean out to the right, widen the stance. Move the right foot out to the right. And then you can lean back a little bit with that right arm, right side chest to find an opening there. Left shoulder blades drawing down the back. Left leg still strong. Press that heel back. Right hand comes down to the mat. Step back to the downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up and back. Press out of that left heel. Knee to nose. Take your time with it. Round the spine, scoop the belly. See if you can lift the foot up a little bit higher, push the mat away from you, then step the left foot up between the hands. You need hip width distance apart, find that runner's lunge, maybe you come up onto the fingertips or blocks, and we'll just go forward and back, real tiny movement with that back foot going forward and back. Start to come into your pose. Now that you've gone forward and back, how do you find center where you get the most space? Straighten the front leg, fold over the front leg. Walk the hands back underneath the shoulders. If you need less, walk the hands forward if you want more. Close the eyes maybe, let the head and the neck go. Inhale forward to your lunge, right hand underneath the right shoulder, left arm starts to reach up, find that twist. Left knee still points forward, reach back with that left arm, open the chest, try not to take the right hip with you. Left hand back down to the mat, step back to downward facing dog. Glide forward to plank pose. Lower down halfway chaturanga, knees up or down. Press back up to plank pose, back to downward facing dog. Start to walk the feet forward up between the hands. Take a lot of steps to get there. Maybe you need the legs straight as long as you can. Once you get into that forward fold, we're staying here. You can either interlace the fingers behind the back and let the knuckles fall back behind the head. If it's too much for the shoulders, 
clasp opposite elbows in front of you. And then draw those shoulders toward the hips so the neck feels nice and long. Switch the weaving of the fingers, bring the other index finger on top. If you have the fingers clasped behind the back, otherwise switch the clasp of the elbows that are worn in front. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold Uttanasana. Two more of those. Inhale up halfway, press down to the feet and the legs. Hug the belly and reach the sternum forward. Exhale, fold. Inhale up, make that L shape with the body. Exhale, fold. This time we're coming all the way up, circle the arms all the way up, reaching the arms up overhead. So palms apart, feet apart, hip width distance. Keep reaching the arms up as much as you can. Feel the fire in the legs and then see if you can lift the ribcage away from the hips. The hips draw down to the neck. So the abdomen gets really long. And then interlace the fingers, bring the right forefinger on top of the left, reach the arms all the way up so the palms face up, and then rotate the hands so that the palms face the head and bring the hands to the top of the head, the crown of the head, elbows are wide. Feet still strong, abdomen still strong. With the hands on the head, press the elbows back as much as you can. Make sure the hands stay on the head and then widen the elbows, press them way back. You'll feel that heat start to build across the shoulder blades. This is such a great way to get into that area. Make sure you're still breathing with the ujjayi breath. Keep pressing those elbows back even more. And then reach the arms back up. You can let go of the interlacing of the fingers so the palms are spread apart. And then see if you can bring the arms back behind the ears. They don't, it doesn't have to happen. Just reach the arms back, keeping that space we just made. And then arms come forward. This time, interlace the fingers with the left forefinger on top of the right. Turn the palms to face away from you. Stretch the arms back up. Get long first here, rooting down through the legs, pressing up through the palms. Then keep the fingers interlaced, bring the hands back to the crown of the head. Stand as tall as you can. Work those elbows back with the hands on the head. Use the breath. Elbows keep pushing back, back, back. Then reach the arms all the way back up. Urdhva Hastasana, hands are apart, palms facing one another. Can you still reach the arms back? Try not to puff off the chest. Press down through the legs, reach the arms back. Those elbows hug in, so the arms are really nice and long, straight, reaching up. And then on the exhale, forward fold. Come all the way down over the legs. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, hands come down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Lower down, halfway chaturanga. Cobra or up dog? Up dog if you're ready. <clears throat> and then push those shoulders back, wide across the chest, pressing the, the inner edges of the hands. And then the arm faces up. <clears throat> And then see if you can widen the shoulder blades across the back when you're downward facing dog, but still squeeze the arms together. Hug the belly in, look forward, bend the knees, step, walk, lightly hop the feet forward, back to your forward fold. Inhale up, halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale all the way up. This time we're bringing the palms together overhead and down in front of the heart on the exhale. Surya A, inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Maybe noticing that space across the upper back, shoulders area. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, hands come down to the mat, step back to plank pose. 
Lower down, halfway chaturanga. Inhale up, up dog, even here. So chest is opening up, heart's reaching up and forward. Feet are stretching back, downward facing dog. Sometimes in upper facing dog, the shoulders start to reach forward and that takes away space across the chest. But if they're open enough, you can open them and find that width across the chest. Bend the knees, look forward, feet forward. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale all the way up. Bring the hands together overhead and down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Plank pose. Chaturanga on the exhale. Cobra up dog on the inhale. Exhale back, downward facing dog. One more cycle. Bend the knees, look forward, feet forward. Inhale up halfway. Exhale fold. All the way up, bring the palms together at the very top, down in front of the heart. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, step back to plank pose, both the your vinyasa, keeping a nice pace and rhythm with the breath, exploring each pose, making more space each time. Ending up in downward facing dog. Right leg lifts up and back. Press out of that right heel. See if you can push the hips back a little bit more, kicking forward. Then bring the knee to the nose. Take your time with that. Step that right foot forward inside of the right hand, coming back into your runner's lunge. You can even move forward and back here a couple of times. And then this time, we'll hop the back foot in, set it up for warrior one. So heel to heel, or probably wider. Reach the arms forward and all the way up. Vira Bajrasana one, square the chest, square the hips. Rotate that left inner thigh, the back thigh, back behind you. And then send that right inner thigh straight forward. Here, you can back bend. So you can start to lift the heart up. Maybe the gaze goes up. And you're reaching the fingertips up. Bring the hands together, down in front of the heart, all the way down to the mat. Step back to plate pose, vinyasa if you want one, or go straight back, downward facing dog. Left leg reaches up and back. Knee to nose, take your time. Step that left foot all the way through. Find that runner's lunge, so fingertips, you can move back and forth a couple of times, getting some length in the right leg. Then hold it. Look down at the mat, hop that back foot in, turn those toes at a sharp angle toward one o'clock. Then reach the arms forward, and all the way up, warrior one. Press down to both heels. Find that rotation in the thighs as so you spin that right inner thigh back, left inner thigh straight forward. Then hug the belly in, start to lift the chest, maybe the gaze. You're rooting down the legs and reaching up to those fingertips. Hands come together. Down in front of the heart, bring them down to the mat, step back to plank pose, make your way back, downward facing dog. Few breaths in downward facing dog.
Then bend the knees, look forward to the top of the mat, hop the feet forward. For seven. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, pull. Bend the knees, Utkatasana, chair pose. Come all the way up to standing, hands come together, down in front of the heart. Bring the hands to the hips. Step the left foot back like two thirds of the way. So it's not the biggest step. Same angle with the feet as warrior one, those left toes turn out a little bit, and then you can use the hands to manually adjust the hips to point straight forward. Keep the, uh, reach the left arm all the way up. Bend at the elbow, so similar to how we started. You can even take the right hand and get that elbow into place, that shoulder into place. So you're grabbing for the top of the left shoulder blade with the left hand. Hug that outer elbow in. Keep the legs really strong, so you're pressing down into the feet. And then reach that right arm out to the side, thumb side down. Bring the right arm behind the back. So you're coming into bone across in the arms. Maybe the right fingertips are reaching toward the left and they're not touching. Maybe they touch or maybe you grab your shirt. But if you grab the shirt or able to clasp the hands, you can totally relax the arms, but try to keep them working. So you're hugging that left elbow up and that right elbow down and back. When you're just coming forward halfway, you start to feel rounding in the lower back. You've gone too far and that might be higher than halfway and that's fine. Halfway is just a, an estimate of where you need to go. Level off the chest, left elbow's reaching forward, right elbow's reaching back, legs are strong. Slowly start to rise back up. Keep the bone across the and the arms as you come back up to where we started. Bring the arms down by the side, let them dangle and be heavy. Feel how lopsided you are on one side compared to the other. Hands come to the hips, step that left foot forward. And we'll switch sides. So right foot steps back, two thirds of the way, pretty big step. Square the hips forward with the hands. Stand tall here, so press into both feet, press into the legs, lift the chest, then reach that right arm up, bend at the elbow. You can even use the left hand to bring it right into place. And then see if you can keep it there. Let that left arm go out to the side, thumb side down. Bring the left arm behind the back, bend the elbow, wiggle those fingertips, the left ones, all the way up between the shoulder blades. Maybe the hands touch, maybe they don't. If they don't, it's fine. You don't even need to grab your shirt, but you can if you want to. You just keep working your arms. All right, keep that work in the legs, start to lean forward. So for me on this side, I can't touch my hands. I could on the other side. And that's really normal. We're very different on one side of the body compared to the other. Sometimes we're even, and that's great. That's what we're all working toward. Keep pressing into that left toe, big, the big mound of the left toe to shift that left hip back. Keep reaching the right elbow forward. Careful not to round the lower back. Lift up if you are. And then slowly rise back up to standing. Keep the arms the way that they are. And then release the arms down by the sides. Let them dangle, be heavy, shoulders down the back. Bring the hands to the hips. Step that right foot forward. You're back into Dasana, the top of the mat. Bend the knees, sit back, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Vinyasa, if you want one, back to downward facing dog. Right leg lifts up and back. Knee to nose. Step that right foot through, up between the hands. Warrior one, hop the back foot in, reach the arms forward and up. Here we draw some the one. Square everything forward, feel strong in the legs. Then interlace the fingers behind the back. 
open up across the chest, humble warrior. So you could rest the torso on the thigh, especially if this is pretty intense. If you want more of a challenge, you bring the torso inside of the right thigh. Keep reaching the chest forward as you bring the knuckles back behind the head. Keep the lunge in the front leg, hug the outer right hip in so you feel even in both feet. And then lift the chest halfway. You can keep pointing the knuckles back behind you. You're just hovering over the front thigh. Come onto the ball of the back foot, so now you're in the lunge. You're taking more of your three. If you want more of a challenge, keep the fingers in interlaced. Otherwise, just bring the arms side by side so the palms face one another. Start to shift forward. Lift that left heel up to hip height. Breathe. If you have the fingers in your lace, gently release, keep reaching those arms back, bending the standing leg, step back to that pyramid pose. That left heel comes back, so it's just like warrior one feet, but the legs are straight. Arms are reaching back, we're reaching the heart forward. Bring the hands down to the mat, maybe on blocks, fingertips, Parjvottanasana pyramid. So now you're folding all the way over that right leg. You're pulling that right hip back. Make sure there's some weight in that right big toe now to the foot. Left hip is gonna come forward a little bit. Legs are straight. Come up halfway. <clears throat> Bring the hands to the mat. Step back to plank pose. Make your way back to downward facing dog. Left leg goes up and back. Press off of that left heel. Knee to nose. Step that left foot through. Warrior one. Take your time. Reach the arms forward and up. Square everything forward. Root down through the legs so you have a nice strong base. You know where we're headed. Interlace the fingers behind the back. One finger over this time. So whatever is not the natural way. Open up across the chest, start to bow forward, humble warrior. And get control of that left hip, especially if it's swinging out to the side. You want to point that left sit bone straight back, so it's right in line with the left heel. And you'll start to bring the chest up halfway, point the knuckles straight back. Come onto the ball of the back foot, either fingers interlaced or hands apart. You're shifting forward to warrior three. You could hop the back foot in a couple of times or just start to shift the weight forward, press out through that right heel so it's not dead weight behind you. Level off the chest and the hip, especially the right hip. It wants to open up to the right. If you have the fingers in your legs, separate them. Keep reaching back with the arms. Bend the standing leg. Land that right heel out to the right a little bit, and then come up to uh, straighten the front leg or fold it forward halfway, still reaching back. Hands come down to the mat. Parjvottanasana pyramid pose. So you're folding all the way down over the leg, straight legs. Left big toe mound presses down to send that left hip back, right hip forward. Maybe get a little bit more length in the spine. Come up halfway, bend that left knee, step back to plank pose, take or skip a vinyasa, knee back and down dog. Bend the knees, look forward, bring the feet up between the hands. Inhale up halfway. Exhale, fold. Chair pose. All the way up to standing, the hands come together down in front of the heart. Bring the hands to the hips. Step that left foot back two thirds of the way. So same position we've been playing with. Square the hips forward. 
Uh, bring that left arm up, back behind the head. Go and the arms again. So right arm comes out to the side. Reach that right arm back behind you. Maybe the hands come together or they're working toward one another. Keep the head uh, pointing forward so it's not going down toward the mat. Scissor those inner thighs. Start to come forward halfway. Come all the way back up. Keep the clasp of the hands. Once you're standing, so the head's over the hips, release the clasp of the hands. Right thumb, right hip crease. Pull that right hip back. Reach the left arm all the way up, standing tall. Come forward halfway. Keep pulling the right hip back as you reach that left arm forward and stay in halfway. Feel all that length you have on the left side of the waist, that left hip's reaching back, the left fingertips are reaching forward. Keep that, start to bring the left arm down toward the mat, maybe on a block underneath the shoulder. Keep opening the chest, pulling that right hip back, reach the right arm up. Now, left hand underneath the shoulder is the less, the, 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 the part of the pose that will give you the most space. If you want a little bit more and you're feeling pretty good today, you could bring that left hand to the ankle or outside of the foot. But your shoulders are open. I just want you to experience the right arm reaching up and all that space you need in the shoulder because this part is usually really difficult. You're pressing down to the legs and reaching up with that right arm. Bring the hands back down to the mat. Back in that pyramid pose, just for a beat, let the head and the neck go. Legs stay the same. Then look forward, bend the right leg, step the left foot forward, forward fold. Inhale up, halfway. Exhale, full, Utkatasana, chair pose. All the way up to standing, hands come together down in front of the heart. Hands to the hips, step that right foot back two thirds of the way, square the hips. Reach the right arm up, bend at the elbow. This time left arm comes out to the side, then bring it behind the back. Come forward halfway. So we love the half bend here with this pose because it fires up the legs. They have to support the rest of the body. So it does make it a pretty powerful pose. And one where you can't relax the legs, you're truly using them and the feet. Start to press back up to standing. Keep the arms the way that they are until you're all the way back up to standing. Then release the arms down by the sides. Feel all that space. We'll play with it again on this side. Left thumb, left hip crease, pull it back. Reach the right arm up. Forward halfway, you just stay halfway. Keep pulling that left hip back as you reach forward with the right arm. Can you keep this amount of space in the right side of the body? Bring that right arm down under the shoulder, on the ankle, or maybe outside of the foot. And revolve the chest open. Keep opening up the, the um, pulling that head back. Left arm reaches up. So you press down into the feet, that bottom arm, and you lift up with the left arm, opening up the chest. So you have that stretch going in two different directions. Spine's really long. Look down at the mat. Bring the hands back down to the mat. Just hold over the legs, leaving the way they are. Bend that left knee, looking forward, step the right foot forward, inhale up halfway. Exhale, hands down to the mat, step back to plank pose. Vinyasa, down dog. Get there however you want. Right leg lifts up and back, knee to nose. Step that right foot all the way through, warrior one. 
Interlace the fingers behind the back. Humble warrior. Come up halfway. Maybe a little higher than halfway. You want to feel like the chest is reaching forward. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Warrior three. Either leave the fingers interlaced, especially if it's not bothering your lower back, or separate them. Shift forward, press out of that left heel, both heels really. Lower that left hip until it's in line with the right. Then bend the standing leg, turn the toes out to the left, set that left heel back, keep reaching forward, straighten the front leg. Bring the hands down to the mat. Are you with the Then look forward with the hands. Bend the knee. Step back. Vinyasa. Skip it. Down up. Last side. Left leg lifts up and back. Knee to nose. Step the left foot through, hop that back foot in, warrior one. Square everything forward, interlace the fingers one finger over, leading with the heart, humble warrior. Start to come up halfway or maybe a little bit higher. Point those knuckles back or fingertips back. Come onto the ball of the back foot. Warrior three. Shift forward, press out of the sole of the right foot like you're pushing something away from you. Then see if you can level off the hips. Bend the standing leg, turn the right toes out to the right a little bit. Reach back with that right heel, man the whole sole of the foot, straight in the front leg. Hold over the front leg. Hands to blocks, fingertips. Maybe you walk the hands forward because your legs are feeling pretty open. Bend that front knee, hands to the mat. Last vinyasa if you want it. Back to the armor piece and dog. Once you get to downward facing dog, take a big breath in through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. Big breath in through the nose. Horses breath, flutter the lift. Then glide forward to plank, lower all the way down to the mat slowly. So you're lying down onto your stomach. To toes point back, tops of the feet to the mat. Reach the arms back behind you, lift the chest, keep the feet down on the mat. Shambhasana with this pose. So you're reaching the chest forward. You're pointing those toes way back. Lower back is long, so tailbone going toward the heels, not toward the shoulders. Maybe you can lift the chest a little higher. Then exhale, release. Make a pillow with the hands. Turn the face one way. And come back to center. Reach the arms back behind you. This time, if you feel like you want to interlace the fingers, that's an option. If it feels like it takes away space from your lower back, skip it. Just reach the arms back. Press down to the feet. Reach the heart forward and up. Taking a deeper variation. So it's like someone's pulling those arms back behind you. You're trying to stretch the chest forward. Toes are going straight back. Then maybe you have the feet away from the mat. Keep that length in the lower back. And then slowly set the feet back down, release the hands, make a pillow, turn the head the other way. Feel the heartbeat. All right, last one. Bring the chest forward, reach the arms back. You choose, you want to interlace the fingers. If so, go one finger over, press into the tops of the feet, lift and spread the chest, reach those knuckles back or the fingertips back, then hover the feet. Stay here, keeping the feet hip-width distance apart. For some of you, bend the legs, 
Try not to splay out the knees and then lift the thighs up as high as you can. It'll feel like they haven't gone anywhere. Reach the chest forward. See if you can get more of a back bend. And if you have the legs bent, extend them back, set the feet back down. That was it. Bend, uh, make a pillow with the hands, turn the face the other way. And then we'll make our way into cat pose. So bring the hands back by the lower ribs, shift back onto hands and knees, walk the hands in so they're underneath the shoulders, and then around the spine, chin to chest. So opposite of the back bend, getting some space back. Widen the lower back. And then come back to tabletop. Walk the hands forward a little bit, almost like you're doing downward facing dog. Bring that right knee as close as you can to the hands. Bring that right foot in toward the left. So it's almost like single pigeon, but the toes are way back by that knee. And then you're crossing the legs. So you're gonna bring that right leg in front of the left leg, still on the knees. And then separate the feet, just like we did in Gomukhasana, uh, I mean in Virasana, separate the feet and you'll start to walk the hands back and come to seated. So the right knee's on top of the left knee. And if this is bothering anyone's knees, you can have the bottom leg extended and just do half so that the right knee's on top of the left. And if that's not working, you can do Jhana Shurshasana, bring the sole of the right foot, inside of the left leg. So one of those three options should work. Sitting up nice and tall, we'll take a twist. So right knee's on top of the left knee, you're trying to get them stacked. Open the chest to the right, you can bring those right fingertips back behind you. And then you can just press the forearm into that top thigh as you revolve the chest open. Then we know we wanna sit up nice and tall, find that breath, and you can gaze in the direction of twisting. Start to bring the gaze forward, slowly unwind. Reach that left arm all the way up. Bend up the elbow. Right arm comes out to the side. Bend up the elbow behind the back. Now you're coming into full Gomukhasana, legs and arms. Maybe the hands connect, maybe they don't. Sit up as tall as you can. Keep working those elbows in toward the body. Start to fold forward. With a pretty deep pose. Make sure you're focused on your Ujjayi breath. Slowly start to bring yourself back up, just the torso. Once you're up, release the arms down by the sides. I'm going to move the neck around nice and soft. And with the eyes open, bring the hands down in front of you. You'll shift forward onto the knees, and then you'll come back to tabletop. So that right knee goes forward, bring it back to tabletop. Once you're in tabletop, bring that left knee as far forward as you can get it. Left toes go to the right. Slide that right leg on top of the left leg with both knees down on the mat. And you want to widen your feet so that you can sit back between the feet. Remember, you have those other options. You can just do half go the cross in this. That way, when the bottom leg would go forward and extend, and then one knee's on top of the other, or John Shoshasana, sole the left foot inside of the right leg. Find your positioning, and if it's okay, if this side is totally different than the first side, you can't do the same thing on both. Left fingertips back behind you, right forearm to that top thigh. Find your twist, sitting up nice and tall.
Start to bring the gaze back forward. Slowly unwind the torso. Leave the legs the way that they are. Reach that right arm up. Bend at the elbow. Left thumb out to the side. Bring that back behind you. Find bone cross in the arms on this side. Wiggle those fingers up toward the shoulder blades. Start to fold forward. So you want to reach with that right elbow as you come forward. And it's kind of like what we've been doing. You're really only coming probably halfway. The different type of hip opening we're playing with internal hip rotation today. So some of you might feel it's more intense or less intense depending on how open the hips are with this type of rotation. Slowly start to make your way back up. Let the arms go down by the sides. Move the neck around. You can just go side to side. Half moon shape with the head going side to side. Then you'll come back to center. So we'll all extend the right leg forward and then the left leg. So the legs are out in front of you. You can scoot more forward on your mat. And then inhale, reach the arms all the way up. On the exhale, forward fold. Come all the way down over the legs. Keep reaching. And then once you find that length in the legs, let the hands come down to the mat, the feet, whatever's right there. Make sure you're not reaching so far that you're taking away the length from the legs. So it should feel like the heels are going forward over the top of the mat and the hips are trying to go back being on the back of the mat, and that's where you get that length. And slowly come back up to seated. Let's bring the soles of the feet together, knees wide. Let's get an external hip rotation here with Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, knees wide, sit up nice and tall. I'm grabbing onto my ankles to sit up nice and tall as I bring the knees down toward the mat. So you get that length in the spine. And then start to lean forward. Elbows can come out wide. You just keep reaching the chest forward, try to keep the rounding out of the spine. So we'll make this a little bit more of an active hip opening. It should feel pretty good. And then remember, we haven't opened the hips in this direction this practice. So there might be significant sensation. This also might look different than it does at the end of practices where we do do a lot of external hip rotation. External hip rotations like the warrior two, um, reverse warrior, or um, tree pose. And then come back up to center. Bring the knees back together with the hands. You're welcome to set up for a seated meditation or come all the way down onto your back for Shavasana. You choose what would give you a better day. When you're ready, set yourself up. If you're taking Shavasana, I'll talk you through it. It'll just come down onto your back. Bring the arms out by the sides. Extend the legs out in front of you. And leave you lift the chest so the shoulder blades come underneath you. Close the eyes. If you have something to cover the eyes, that's always really nice. And then move the head side to side. So you can just feel the back of the head on the mat. Real slow. Maybe two or three times. It's a really nice way to rock yourself into relaxation, stillness. 
Next time you're back up into center, stay there. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Exhale out of the mouth. Shavasana. Let's move the breath throughout the body, taking a simple inhale, nice long exhale. Maybe you soften the knees ahead side to side. Rocking yourself away. Find center, move the hands and the feet. Reach the arms overhead. Really long in that. And make your way onto your right side. Bend the legs, roll over. Cradle the head and the arms. And we'll use the hands to bring yourself up to an easy cross legged seat if you're not already there. Sitting up tall with the eyes closed. Bring the hands together in front of you. Bow on the head to first honor your heart and your spirit, as well as everyone around you, practicing with you out in the world. Bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste.
Thanks for joining. I hope that felt good and shoulders should definitely be pretty open. And this is a great practice if you ever feel like um, you're too attached to something that you shouldn't be attached to or have any kind of emotions, the shoulders are a great place to get into, break that stuff up and you'll feel a lot more free after. Hope you all have a great day.